In this module, we'll talk about one type of estimation that's called point estimation. We will also learn different methods that we use to estimate population parameter values. As we already know that population parameter values are usually unknown. Like in the case of population mean mu or the population proportion p or population variance sigma square. Our goal is to estimate the unknown population parameter value. In reality, we observe these values. We cannot really survey the entire populations due to various limitations. Hence, we take a random sample from the population and use the resulting data to estimate the values of the desired population parameter. The range of possible values of parameter theta is called a parameter space. For example, if P denoted the proportion of individuals having stress-induced myocardial infraction, then the parameter space will be omega, which is equals to P, when P ranges from 0 to 1. This parameter space omega takes on all possible values of P, which ranges from 0 to 1. And we know this, that population proportion cannot exceed 1, and it cannot go below 0. Hence, this omega takes out all the possible values that P can assume for any specific population. And in this case, for the individuals having stress-induced myocardial infraction. A point estimate is a single numeric value which is used to estimate the corresponding population parameter. Whereas the point estimation refers to the process of estimating a parameter from a probability distribution based on observed data from the distribution. Hence, the point estimate will be the result, the outcome, whereas the point estimation is a rule, it's a formula, it's a process that help us to get the point estimate. Here are a few examples of the point estimates. X bar, which is given by sum of the values divided by a number of values, is a point estimator of the population mean mu. Similarly, the function p cap equals to x over n, where x could be 0, it could be 1, is a point estimator of the probability p. Similarly, the function s square is a point estimator of the population variance sigma square. There are various methods of point estimation. The method of maximum likelihood, the method of moment, and the method of least squares are most commonly used in statistics. Here in this module, we will talk about the method of maximum likelihoods. Suppose we have a random sample of size n with its values x1, x2, up till xn, which assumed probability distribution depends on some unknown parameter theta. Now, our primary goal here will be to find the point estimate of point estimator theta cap such that theta cap is a good point estimator at the observed values of the random sample. Now, the basic idea of the maximum likelihood method of estimation is that the good estimate of the unknown theta parameter would be a value that maximizes the probability. This probability is also known as likelihood. So it maximizes the likelihood of getting the data we observe. Suppose we have a random sample of size n x1 to xn for which the probability density function for each x1 is given as fxi with its parameter theta and these theta are unknown parameters, theta1, theta2, up till theta m, with certain probability density function or a probability mass function given as fx that is dependent upon 
m various parameters theta 1 theta 2 up till theta m suppose that theta 1 up till theta m is restricted to be given parameter space omega then the maximum likelihood procedure works in stepwise where in step 1 when we regard regarded a function of theta 1 up till theta m the joint probability density function of x1 up to xn is given by a likelihood function that is denoted by L of theta 1, theta 2 up till theta m, which is a joint probability function. Hence, it is given as product of i varies from 1 to n f x i theta 1, theta 2 up till theta m. In the second step, if u i x1, x2 up till xn, u2, x1, x2, xn, up to um, x1, x2, xn, is the m tuple that maximizes the likelihood function, then theta i cap is going to be equal to ui, x1, x2 up till xn, which is the maximum likelihood estimator of a parameter theta i. Hence, the corresponding observed values of the statistic in two, namely ui, x1 to n, xn, u2, x1 to xn, up to um, x1 to xn, are called the maximum likelihood estimates, which are also written as MLE of theta i. Let's take an example and use the method of maximum likelihood estimation to, to, get, the, to get the estimate from our data, for our data. Suppose the weights of randomly selected female college students are normally distributed with unknown mean and standard deviation. One thing is very important to highlight here, that the weight is a continuous random variable. And we are selecting female college students and trying to measure the, and measuring their weights. And the distribution of our continuous response variable, that is weights, is normally distributed. When we do not know their mean, we do not know its standard deviation. A random sample of size 10 female college students yielded the following weights in kilograms. Now, based on the definitions given above, firstly, we identify the likelihood function and the maximum likelihood estimator of mu, which is the mean weight of all female college students. Secondly, using the given sample, we find a maximum likelihood estimate of mu. Firstly, to identify the likelihood function, we understand that weights are our random variable. Their probability density function comes from the normal probability distribution. Hence, f of xi mu sigma square equals to 1 over sigma under root 2 pi e to the power xi minus mu over square over 2 sigma square. When x ranges from minus infinity to plus infinity, mu, its parameter ranges from minus infinity to plus infinity, and its other parameter sigma, which ranges from zero to infinity. Therefore, the likelihood function is likelihood of mu sigma, which is equals to sigma to the power minus n, which is actually the product of this function, n times we get this likelihood function. It can be shown upon maximizing the likelihood function with respect to mu, that the maximum likelihood estimator of mu is mu cap equals to one over n, some i varies from one to n xi, which is x bar. Now, since we already know that the maximum likelihood estimator for the population mean mu is x bar, based on the given sample, I'm ex we will use x bar as the MLE to measure the weights of those 10 individuals. Hence, mu cap equals to 1 over n sum i varies from 1 to nxi, which gives us 54.1 kilograms. Hence, the weight of the 10 individuals we, we observed is 54.1 kilogram. Here, one should note that the only difference between the formula for the maximum likelihood estimator and the maximum likelihood estimate is that the estimator is defined using capital letters to denote that its value is random and the estimate 
is defined using lowercase letters to denote that its value is fixed and based on an obtained sample. There are a few characteristics of a good point estimator. It should be unbiased, it should be consistent, an efficient and a sufficient estimator. Thank you.